Top 10 Myths About Evolution Part 1 Hey Ken, my teachers and scientists have shown it to me. Computer simulations prove evolution. That is a common, but flawed argument. Every few months, a news report will trump at a new computer program with living cyber-organisms that prove how life on Earth evolved. These simulations often show how artificial life forms reproduce, grow, and change over several generations. The algorithms behind these creatures can be quite complex in an effort to be as close to the real world as possible. But what do such programs prove? For one, it is always important to remember that any computer program reflects the biases and assumptions of the programmer. They start with the assumption that evolution is true and try to make all the observations fit the assumption. Also, many programs have goals and waypoints, something that is not true of supposed Darwinian evolution. The programmers do not make a program without certain boundaries and guidelines that direct what the program can and cannot do. They make one with a purpose in mind. Finally, the greatest irony of all is that these brilliant programmers, who are trying to prove that life evolved without intelligence, are pouring plenty of intelligence into making these sophisticated artificial organisms. Try keeping that in mind next time when they declare this proves life arose by sheer brainless natural selection. But didn't you know this? Homologous structures show past evolution. Did you know you've got two bones in your lower arm? They are called radius and ulna. And the whale has got two bones in his flipper too. They are called radius and ulna. Really? Who named them? The whale? I doubt it. This claim is in almost every biology textbook on the market, with drawings of colored bones that show how evolution supposedly left its fingerprints on animals of common descent. These drawings point out how similar structure proves that we all come from one ancestor. The proof, they say, is as plain as the hand in front of our face. Objectively, however, similar design and function does not prove anything. It just means there is similar design and function. <laughs> you know, an iPod, iPhone, and an iPad may have very similar parts for example, but that certainly doesn't mean the iPad evolved from the iPod because of hardware glitches. <laughs> Instead, because we have objective knowledge of history, we know that the same company designed all three of them, which explains the similar design. In the same way, similar structures in animals are just as strong an evidence for a common designer, leaving his mark on the work of his hand. Human designers often use similar solutions across a wide range of products. Why wouldn't we expect God to do the same? That's beside the point. Exclusively we've told you before. There are clear transitional fossils. Darwin fretted over the lack of them, paleontologists are still looking for them, but they are often tutored as the foundation for evolutionary theory. According to evolutionists, transitional fossils are sparse for a number of reasons. 1. Fossils in general on Loy give us a glimpse of the past. 2. Punctuated equilibrium may cause geologically rapid changes in species. And 3. They aren't easy to distinguish. However, many of us have seen the supposed fossils of the horse and whale series and the new missing link called Dictalic. But according to the graph, only the dark bones were actually found. This is just one example of how some strange stories can be made from just a few little bones. We must remember that fossils do not come with tags telling us when and how the animal was buried, its lifestyle, and if or how it was related to another species. Scientists must make reasonable assumptions based on what they believe about the past and extrapolations from the data. Without an objective source of information, these assumptions are often tied to the subjective evolutionary worldview. Creationist scientists, on the other hand, see the fossil record as evidence for both a global flood and also the amazing diversity of the original created kinds. Because there are a lack of transitional forms, and the ones found, including walking whales and fish, are contentious to say the least, evolutionists must resort to blurring the lines and claiming that, since all species are in transition, we should not expect to find missing links. Evolution props is that there is one giant tree of organisms and that they are all one species. 
but if the creation account is true, then there are many trees in that field. The Bible revealed it to us a long time ago about this similarity claim, in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 39, All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. Perhaps the reason we do not find true transitional forms is because one created kind does not, cannot, and has never changed into another created kind.